Welcome to another unit in this Excel course. This time I'm going to talk about how we can use Excel to calculate the covariance or the correlation coefficient by Pearson for a data set. Well, here I have for a set of students the results for two exams. At this point, I'm just assuming that the marks they get can be considered as metric data. In particular, since if you look closely, none of the two sets actually contains a 5.0, so no failing mark. So in this case, we can assume, at least for the moment, they are actually metrically scaled, so I'm allowed to calculate the covariance and the correlation coefficient. How am I going to go about this? Well, can just start with COV and then I directly see it goes to covariance.p and .s. You might recall this from the sessions on measures of dispersion and distribution. The P is the uncorrected version, the S is the corrected version. So if I want to work here with the corrected version, for example, I can go covariance.s. Then I have to enter two arrays. So first data set, second data set. First data set, semicolon, second data set. Close this and I get a result minus 0 0.1087. That's already pretty small, especially considering that the covariance can take values between minus infinity and plus infinity. So we can already assume that there is not really a very strong correlation going on. Well, at least if the measure I'm measuring in also fits this. That's actually a problem. This can be anything between minus infinity plus infinity. This also is in the unit the corresponding data sets are in. So I actually have a big problem if I use the covariance and try to interpret this. And that's why we're going to use the correlation coefficient because first this gets rid of the unit so it's u not less and it's only between minus one and plus one so this gives us a better way of actually interpreting the result we get well before we do this let's do one additional example here i've taken care of that both data sets both arrays have the same size what if they don't so what if I shorten this by one? Then you see directly this no longer works. So the covariance requires both arrays to be of exactly the same size. Only then can a value be calculated. So if you get an error at this point, usually this means they are not of the same size. So you made one too long or one too small. Okay, so much for the covariance. As I said, correlation coefficient makes more sense. And this one we can just get here as corral. Looks the same as with the covariance. The difference being I don't have a dot P or dot S because I don't need them anymore. We'll get the same result whether I work with corrected versions or uncorrected versions. And well, two arrays here. So first variable semicolon second variable close this and well again it's negative well obviously because when the correlation uh, yeah if the covariance is negative then the correlation is negative as well and again it's relatively small with 0 0.4 well not so small that it's negligible but it's still small so it's a not so strong negative result. So the people who get a better mark in the first exam get a slightly worse mark in the second exam on average. So not for all, as we can see here or here, this is the case, but on average, this is what results from this. Let's again test what happens if I enter unequally sized arrays here. And I get the same example, uh, same result, same arrow, arrow with not available. So meaning I cannot do this 
I'm missing values at one point. So some of the um, exo formulas, they're actually correct for this. So they would go with only using the relation for the shorter data set. That's for example, if you use the sum product, but those statistics functions, particular here, covariance, corral, they don't make any exceptions. You actually have to have a one-on-one -on -one fit. And well, as I said, that's the two topics I wanted to talk about in this session. So I hope you enjoyed it. hope you understood what I was talking about here. And if you're looking for additional input on Excel, feel free to visit the rest of the course or have a look at the corresponding playlist. I say goodbye and see you next time.